Hello. We welcome you to this Bible study of the Banking Blessings Ministry. My name is Good Luck of Febu. This is my sister, Nicole Silva uh, In this Bible study, we will continue our study of Christ's teaching on the call to compassion. You recall that God created each person to be his provider assistant. And the way that works is that whenever there is a need, he will place that need in the path of one or more persons to provide a service to address the need. And uh, in the last Bible study, we looked at Christ's teaching where he used the parable of the Good Samaritan to illustrate a call to compassion. In, to, in today's Bible study, we are going to look at his teaching where he uses the parable of the sheep and the goats to describe God's call to compassion in a more general way. We will learn uh, the Christ's description of God's call to compassion through the parable of the sheep and the goats. And God calls to com God's call to compassion is consistent with his purpose of setting up a mutual provider receiver relationship between people, a reciprocal provider receiver relationship whereby in certain incidents one may be a provider, in other incidents the same person may be the receiver. And the intention is for everybody to receive service provided by the other people and be willing to provide service to other people. In this Bible study, Christ describes the responsibility, our responsibilities when a service is placed in our path. The responsibilities of, of God's provider assistant, which is every one of us. He describes the responsibilities and then describes the rewards and punishment, rewards for those that accept the call to compassion and perform the service that is placed in their path, punishment for those that decline the call to compassion by refusing, by denying the service that is placed in their path. And what we will learn today is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 36. Actually, there are three related parables in Matthew chapter 25 uh, that sort of prepare for this message, that, uh, in which Christ told different parts of the message before focusing on the message itself. The first one is the parable of the ten virgins, in which Christ told us that we need to be prepared for the day of judgment. And being prepared for the day of judgment is actually to perform your role as provider assistant, to provide for services placed in your path, because you will be judged as to whether you do this or you don't do it. Uh, in fact, on judgment, uh, as we will see, God will divide people into two categories. One category being those that perform the services placed in their path, and then the other category is those that deny services placed in their path. Of course, each time you perform a service placed in your path, you earn blessings. And by earning these blessings into your bank of blessings, so to speak, then you are getting yourself prepared to meet with God on Judgment Day. And that's really what the parable of the Ten Virgins is. Of course, that parable is not the subject of this Bible study. But it, we are talking about it because it, it is relevant. To the, it was kind of preparatory for, for the teaching on call to compassion. The second is the parable of the talents, which sort of describes the capabilities that God grants to each of us so that we will be, we will have the tools we need 
to perform our responsibilities as his provider assistant. And he calls on us, of course, to, to expand these capabilities so that we'll be better able to perform our duties. Um, by, by, by growing and diversifying your, uh, your capabilities, then you increase the type of things you can do and the range of things you can do as God's provider assistant. Again, this parable is actually, we are going to study it in a future Bible study. And we are mentioning it today because it is relevant to today's study. But today's study will be focused on the parable of the sheep and the goats, which is in Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. Here, Christ defines the responsibilities, defines our responsibilities as God's provider assistant. And he defines them in terms of basic needs. And show you that when you, when God places a service on your part, when God calls you to service and you obey by providing the service, then you end blessings. But if you disobey by denying the service, then you incur punishment. We will look at that in detail. Well, Christ it started this uh, parable by telling us that on judgment day God will divide us, that is the Christ will come in his glory and divide people into two categories. One category will be those people that perform their service, perform services placed in their path, that is those that answer God's call to compassion. Then the other a category will be those that decline God's call to compassion by denying services placed in their path. This description is in Matthew 25, verses 31 to 33, which we are going to read. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. I want us to note that the mention of sheep and goats here is really used to illustrate the division of people into two categories. A shepherd said God will separate people into two categories in the same way that a shepherd separates his flock into sheep and good. Um, there is, this is not intended to say anything about the behavior of these animals. They are just used to illustrate the division of people into two categories. As we go through this, you we hope that you make up your mind about which category you are going to be in. Because the God's call to compassion is really about human service. It's about how we relate to fellow human beings. So, do you want to relate to fellow human beings the way God created you to relate by performing the services that He places in your path, or do you want to relate in another way? That's one what we hope to accomplish in this Bible study. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Okay, so he will divide people into two groups, two categories. One category, those that answer God's call to compassion. The other category, those that do not answer God's call to compassion. Well, what is God's call to compassion? Is that when there is a need, he places the need in your heart. He positions you so that you realize that this is a need placed in your path. Of course, you accept a call to compassion. There are a number of things you have to do. One of them is you have to recognize the assignment. You have to recognize that something has been placed on your path. Uh, remember the, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. The Samaritan saw the man that was beaten up and immediately recognized that this man needed help and he needed to do something about it. 
So it is that recognition of a service placed in your part. The recognition may be just through your own observation, which is very important. It may be that the person is able to call for help. In the case of the Good Samaritan, where the beaten man was unconscious, so he couldn't call for help. Uh, a, a person that is looking, that is thirsty and needs a glass of water, may tell you that, oh, do you have water? I'm really thirsty. So the person lets you know. But at times, the behavior of somebody will tell you that you see a stranger and say, oh, can I help you? You want some people to drink? That is, that is a way of showing hospitality, showing that you care about this person. So you have to recognize the assignment, then you have to provide the service effectively, essentially determine what is needed and determine what you can do to provide for it. At times it may be a personal thing that you do, at times it may be by organizing resources to do it, at times it may be in so many different ways and we will look at, we will look at some of those. But the first thing is recognize and then identify what you need to do, determine what you need to do to provide for the service to the best of your ability. The service is described in terms of basic needs and look at the exact description in the Bible. Matthew 25, 35 to 36. For I was hungry, and he gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and he gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. So Christ uses basic needs to illustrate. These are not, the, the, the needs are not limited to these, but they are illustrative. Essentially what he is saying is, a need was placed in your part, you recognized it and did what, and provided, for, provided a service to address the need. A need was placed in your part, you recognize it and you provided a service to address the need. Now, every human need can be shown to consist of these basic needs. That's why he used them, the basic needs of uh, food and drink, clothing and shelter, and protection and what we call community values. We've gone through this in the past. So he used these basic needs to illustrate a need placed in your path and you provide a service to address that need. Now you can provide a service free or for a fee. The call to compassion can be answered by providing free service. It can also be answered by providing for fee service. We will look at for fee service somewhat in this Bible study. We will have another Bible study that will be devoted to for fee service to see what are the rules, what are the, uh, the, the conditions that the, the service has, has to satisfy in order to qualify as your response, as, as an acceptable response to a call to compassion. If you provide free service, the service is adequate if it is provided with a pure heart. Remember, in the Beatitudes, we were told that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, I think. That's what he said. Blessed are the pure in heart. Being pure in heart talks about your motivation for doing things. For instance, if you are providing a free service to address a need, your only motivation should be to provide for that service to serve the person that needs the service. Your only motivation is to say, look, God has placed this on my path and I'm going to do it to serve the interest of the person that needs the service. If, if that is your only motivation, then you are doing it with a pure heart and the, the service you provide is adequate. 
But if you have other motivations, like if you want people to recognize you, if you want to, if you want to do it so that people will applaud for you or for some other kind of recognition, then well, yeah, that is also good. But it doesn't really serve the purpose for which you that uh, that need was placed in your path. Now, for fee service, it's also adequate if it also, the same condition, it has to be provided with a pure heart. In that case, the meaning of pure heart is, uh, it requires a lot more interpretation because you have, in, in this particular situation, you have determined that it is necessary to charge a fee in order to provide the service effectively that if you start doing it from your pocket, paying for it yourself, then at some point you are going to be unable to continue. You will not be able to provide the service effectively. Whereas if you let people pay for it, if you charge them a fee, then that fee will be fed back into the process and you will be able to continue to provide the service. The fee has to be fair. It has to be the fee needed to provide the service effectively. Again, that's not a simple thing. It's quite complicated and we're not going to go into the details in this Bible study because we have another Bible study coming up that is devoted to that. But the fee has to be fair and non-exploitative for the service to qualify as your response to a call to compassion. And what that means is that you earn the blessing that was set up for you when that service was placed in your path. And you can earn that blessing by providing for fee service, but the fee has to be fair and non-exploitative. We, we, we see that the parable of the talent sort of gives us information that to, to, to explain that yes, Providing for fee service to address a need is an acceptable way to respond to a call to compassion. We also see an example of uh, for fee service in uh, interactions between Jacob and Laban. Again, we've talked about this in the, in the previous Bible study. Um, we will not go into detail, but Leb uh, Jacob and Laban reached various agreements about how Jacob will be paid to provide a, a shepherd service to Laban, to his uncle Laban. Well, God gives us provider, he gives us tools to enable us to perform our duties as his provider assistant. Uh, these tools, the, 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 the fact that he grants capabilities to each of us is actually the subject of that Christ uh, described through the parable of the talents. Um, in that parable simply says that God grants every person capabilities and he expects us to deploy the capabilities, that is to use them in service and then to, and we are rewarded if we grow and diversify our capabilities. Grow means you increase your value. Uh, diversify means you increase the variety of things that you do. But each of us is given the basic capabilities that you are expected to expand your capabilities in order to expand the size and variety of things you can do. Those that grow and diversify their capabilities are rewarded. And those that choose stagnation, the example being the man that took the money given to him and buried it in the ground. That is a very good ex uh, uh, description of a, somebody choosing stagnation. So I'm not going to grow. Then at the end, he will dig up the money and give back to the person that gave it to him. So that's a very good illustration of stagnation, and those that choose stagnation will be punished. That's, that's what the parable of the talent tells us. So God gives each of us capabilities, and we are expected to extend 
the range and capacity of the capabilities that we are given. This parable also describes what a needy being the person that is in need of a service. We encountered this a little bit in last week's Bible study, the parable of the Good Samaritan. The needy, of course, was the man that was beaten up by robbers. But the needy should not convey the impression, the any, uh, should not convey any impression of poverty. It, it has nothing to do with poverty. Somebody is a needy if the person needs a service that you have been blessed to provide. If you are positioned to provide a service, the person that needs the service is a needy. And you, of course, are the provider. It doesn't matter. The social status of that person doesn't matter. And Christ describes them as weaker or uh, least, that is smaller. You know, he said, whatever you did for me, then you did for the least of these brothers of mine. The least mean those that needed the service that you were positioned to provide. The, somebody that needs a service you are positioned to provide is weaker than you in relation to that service is relatively weak in relation to that service and it doesn't the social status of the person has nothing to do with it but remember that what this does is it sets up that reciprocal uh, provider receiver relationship where somebody that is a provider in something may be the receiver in another interaction so sometimes you provide things that benefit other people and sometimes you receive things provided by other people, things and services provided by other people. Let us read about this in uh, Matthew 25 verses 37 to 40. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So when you, when a service is placed in your path and you provide a service, you are in fact providing the service for God. You are providing it to God. You are doing it for Him. Even though the receiver of the service is a fellow human being and you provide that, you are a fellow, a fellow human being. So each of you is representing God in that interaction. Well, Christ says that you are rewarded if you perform a service that is placed in your path. That is, if you respond to God's call to compassion, God's call to provide a service. If you fulfill your assignment, when a God when God places an assignment in your path and you perform this assignment and you fulfill it, then you earn a blessing and you earn a blessing each time you do this. The blessing accumulates, the blessings you earn accumulate for you in, a, we can call it a bank in heaven. You accumulate treasures in heaven. Because there are no banks there, but, it, but essentially each of us has a bank or has an accumulation of blessings and each time we respond to a call to compassion, we are adding to that accumulation. That's what this parable is telling us. And in fact, that's where this organization, this Bible study program got its name, Banking Blessings. That's God created us to be his provider assistant 
and provides us opportunities to perform that is from time to time gives us assignments as his provider assistant and each time we perform such assignment we earn a blessing the blessings we earn accumulate for us that is what this parable is telling us let us read this matthew 25 34 and 46. then the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed by my father take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Yes, this is, these are two separate uh, uh, par uh, parts of the passage. The first one is really the introductory part of the uh, passage, verse 34, when he said, Come you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you the time of creation for i was hungry and you gave me something to eat i was thirsty you gave me something to drink so here he say you are blessed and this is the reason you are blessed and if you look at that carefully what he's really saying is that each time you perform this service you earn a blessing then at the end after he has described the wicked he said the wicked will go away to eternal punishment this is in verse 46 but the righteous will go to eternal life, will inherit eternal life. The righteous, of course, are those that answer the call to compassion, those that perform the service that is blessed in their path. So verse 46 has both, uh, both the punishment and the reward. But, you know, that's why we read it. Well, you incur punishment for denial of service when a service is placed in your path and you fail to recognize the service or you recognize it and look the other way whatever the case if you don't provide a service it's not a neutral thing if you provide a service you earn a blessing if you don't provide a service you incur punishment that's just the way god set it up there is no neutrality in it. It's either one or the other. So if a service is placed in your path and you deny the service, which means you have declined a God call to provide a service, then you will incur punishment. And with that punishment, you are condemned to turn a fire prepared for devil and his angels. The punishment you okay, okay, let us read about this in verses 41 to 46 before we continue talking about it. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Let's read that again. The, you, you, uh, then you will say to those on his left, Depart from me, depart, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Yes. For I was hungry, and he gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and he gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and he did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and he did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and he did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you. He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Yes, here yeah, basically he said this is the opposite of the providing service. Again, describe the service in terms of basic needs. He said, I was hungry, you did not give me something to eat, I was thirsty, you did not give me a drink. Essentially, that a need was placed in your path and you did not provide a service to address the need. You did not respond to God's call to compassion. That is the charge that will be placed on your feet and by the time you receive this charge it is too late so you have to uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this that as 
you, you, this is where the preparedness part of it comes in. That you have to respond to God's call to compassion in order to get yourself prepared so that you then you don't get to a situation where this charge will be read for you. The blessings you earn by performing services placed in your path accumulate for you. Every time you earn a blessing, that blessing is like a promise from God. God promises you something good and that promise will be fulfilled at its own time. It never goes away. Nothing will happen to it. Once you earn a blessing, it's yours to keep. The same way, once you incur punishment, it's yours to keep. There is a difference though that a promise of punishment can be forgiven. If you repent, if you turn from somebody that denies service to, be, to somebody that performs service, and you really re repent, not, you know, not providing services blessed in your path, God will forgive you. Because that's what he promised us. If you repent from your ways, you will be forgiven. If you turn to living in the image of God, if you turn to living the way that God created you to live, then from that point on, you will be earning blessings as you live. The blessings you earn accumulate for you. Your punishment can be forgiven. Whatever the case, though, the punishment and the blessing don't write off each other. If you in cure punishment and you don't uh, repent, the punishment stays there for you. It's a promise from God and it will be fulfilled at its own time. If you earn blessing, the blessing stays there for you. It's a promise from God and it will be fulfilled at its own time. We've come across this uh, a number of times in the past. They don't trade off. It's not like if you owe money in the bank and you make some money, then the money uh, takes away some of your debt. There is no such thing. They don't trade off each other. They are parallel promises. They are like treasure. Uh, they are like accumulations in separate banks. One is your bank of blessings, and the other one is accumulated punishment that you have incurred. How does God judge this? Well, that's up to him. He didn't tell us. I don't know how much of it you have to have in order to not get in trouble or to get in trouble. But what Christ told us through the parable of the virgins is that if, if you, at the time of judgment, you are, you, you are seen as somebody that performs services placed in his or her path, then you will earn eternal life. That's what he said. And if you are seen as somebody that denies services placed in his path, well, uh, you will be condemned to eternal fire. That's what he said. So be prepared. Fill your bank of blessing by performing services placed in your path and empty your bank of punishment by repenting, just by turning away from that type of life and stop living it. That's it. That's how you get yourself prepared. Obey God's call to compassion, which means provide services placed in your path, accept your role as God's provider assistant. Be a good Samaritan. Uh, there is an example of a Canadian, like uh, an Irish immigrant in Canada, Joseph Scriven, that people in his community call the local Good Samaritan. Uh, his story is quite an interesting story, but he is the author of the poem that, become, that became the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That's the person we're talking about, Joseph Scriven from Hope, Ontario, Canada. He was, he lived in the late 1800s.
So let your community, let members of your community know you through your actions as the local Good Samaritan. That is quite something to say about anybody. Well, today we learned about God's call to compassion, that is Christ's description of God's call to compassion using the parable of the sheep and the goat. Basically, that at judgment day, people will be divided into two categories. One category will be the people that obey God's call to compassion, that is people that provide services placed in their path, and they will inherit eternal life in the kingdom of God. The other category is people that disobey God's call to compassion, which is people that deny services placed in their path, and they will incur eternal punishment in a fiery furnace. The blessings you earn by responding to God's call to compassion accumulate for you. The punishment you incur by denying, by declining the call, also accumulate for you, and there are parallel promises. Both promises will be fulfilled, and how they interact on judgment day is that's up to God to decide. But you you will be in a better position if you are. If you fill your bank with blessings, then God will not have to decide about what to do with the punishment because they won't be there. Well, that brings us to the end of this Bible study. And uh, Gosi, I don't know if you have a comment or. A well, that's a pretty good summary. Yeah. Well, we thank you for joining us today. We pray that you have learned something that will make a positive impact on your life and most important, bring you closer to God's purpose for your life. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you.